Hi everyone and welcome to Shibari Stuff. I just wanted to do a quick video to show you how to condition your rope after fielding many many questions. So the rope on the right you see here is some nicely conditioned and used Shibari rope. It's lovely and soft against the skin and it actually smells great. Looks good too. And in the bag behind it, as you can see, is a bag full of brand spanking new rope that I've only just cut off the roll. And using just these simple things here, we're going to turn that brand new rope into some fantastic rope to use on your partner. Okay, so first things first, you're gonna need a gas flame of some sort. Um, I've used barbecues before, I've used small uh, portable gas stoves. I actually just find the gas cooktop in my house to be the best way. Um, then you're going to need something to protect your hands against the heat. I've just got some cheap riggers gloves that I bought from the local hardware store, the Bunnings here in Australia. And then you need some decent quality rope. Okay, I don't recommend you buying rope from Bunnings or from your local hardware store. Um, there's a lot of reasons why, which I'll go into in another video. But you get what you pay for with Shibari rope. And considering what you'll be doing with it, that it's going to be against the skin of somebody that you hopefully like, um, you might want to have better quality rope. When you start considering that you may also be suspending that person, where a rope breakage would result in a injury of some sort, possibly a very serious injury to that person that you like, um, then really spend a little bit more and get some decent quality rope. So the first thing you want to do is get rid of all of these little burrs that are on the rope. All the little hairy bits, they need to go. Okay, so first of all, you can draw the rope through a carabiner or across a shibari ring to loosen up some of those fibers. And then we just literally singe them off. So not putting the rope on the flame, but just a little bit above it, you can singe it off. And then pass the, the rope across the flame. Prior to doing this, you want to make sure that you've flaked the rope out nicely so that it doesn't snag on anything and then one spot gets stuck over the flame. And I do a little twist, so I'll pass it through once and then a little twist, pass it through again, a little twist again. So part of my objective is not just to singe off all these hairy pieces, but to actually lightly color the rope, sort of bake it a little bit across the open flame and make it a darker, more attractive color. And you literally do that in small sections for the entire length of the rope. And this is part of the labor of love of Shibari. It will be quite time consuming, particularly if you've got, you know, 10 plus ropes in your Shibari bag. You'll spend quite a bit of time doing this and also the subsequent oiling process. So just pass it across the flame, little twist each time until you stop seeing those little burning embers. As long as you keep the rope moving, you don't have to be afraid of hurting it. It's not like it's just going to burst into flames and destroy the length. That may only happen if you hold it in one place or if the rope gets snagged accidentally and then pulled out of your hands and falling onto the flame. Other than that, just keep the rope moving. Backwards and forwards. Don't try doing it without the gloves. I've done that in the past. Bad move. And we're nearly there. I normally have the range hood going as well, just extracting some of the smell. It smells a bit like, um, I guess, a grass fire, 
burning grass. So unless you want that particular fragrance throughout your house, might be an idea to open a window or whack the range hood on as well. So after this is completely singed, there's a lot of traditionalists that say you then should wipe the rope down um, using a rag, preferably a rag that's soaked in some Japanese sake. Um, I don't actually do this. I have considered that um, you could probably wipe it down with methylated spirits. Methylated spirits um, would serve the same purpose as the sake uh, in that it cleans the uh, the embers, uh, the, uh, the ashed pieces off your rope. And methylated spirits also evaporates quite quickly and thoroughly, as does the alcohol. But I don't do this. I, I actually like the colour, and I like a little bit of the smoky fragrance to remain on the rope. So, personal preference, you can do that if you wish. I won't be doing that in this video, I'll be skipping that step. But just be aware that that step exists, and some people quite like it, and a lot of people swear by it. So I used to find this process quite onerous, quite time consuming. I've since started to really enjoy it. I like the preparation of my ropes. I enjoy putting energy and touch into preparing my ropes for somebody. So I guess like with most things in life, it depends on how you look at it. You can look at it as, as an onerous, boring job. Or you can look at as look at it as something that you're pouring love and energy into in preparation, which is the way I choose to do it. So the ends are the only part that you really have to worry about. They will catch on fire if you leave them long enough over the flame, um, or sometimes they remain smouldering. So just make sure you squeeze those and kill off any uh, glowing embers that might remain. So what I'll do is I'll just whack this rope over here on top of the new rope and show you the difference. So as you can see there, you've got the freshly singed rope on the right, which looks considerably darker than the brand new furry rope here on the left. Um, and that's one of the reasons why I do so many passes through the flame. I like that color change. I think it's quite attractive, particularly in photographs. All right, so we'll move on to the next process. Okay, so moving on to the next step of the conditioning process. After you've singed and got off all the um, large hairs from your rope, um, and if you're like me, you've singed it so it's also changed color a little bit, got a little bit darker, a little bit prettier. Um, you want to oil your rope somehow. So I choose to use an oil because I feel it makes the rope uh, less heavy and it remains more responsive. But a lot of people swear by a uh, wax or a butter type setup. Either way, you want to make sure you're using something of good quality. It's really important that it's um, not a type of oil that will go rancid so you need to steer away from vegetable oils olive oil that kind of thing um, people put some crazy things on their rope so most of the waxes that i've seen are a blend of beeswax and a camellia oil the oil that i choose to use is this um, this is actually something that i make it's a premium rope oil. It's made from a 100% organic and 100% hypoallergenic massage carrier oil, and it's lightly fragranced. So the reason I do this is I figure the rope's gonna be in close contact 
with somebody's skin. So I want to make it as least likely as possible that that's going to cause any sort of adverse reaction on their skin. I basically want the whole rope experience to be a pleasant experience and a positive one. So the last thing I want is for them to have some sort of allergic reaction either to the rope or to the oil that I've chosen to put on the rope. So a lot of the cheaper ropes, particularly hardware store ropes, will have chemicals in it already that will cause some sort of irritation, which is why I said earlier that it's really important that you buy the best quality rope that you can. Um, again, I choose to use rope that's imported from Japan and is tried and tested for shibari. And then I complement that with a premium rope oil that I know will cause no adverse reactions as well. And I can't think of anything better for the skin than a massage oil, which is organic and hypoallergenic as well. So that's what I choose to use. And it comes in a really convenient pump pack. And so with the, um, the oiling or the waxing process, a lot of people like to use a small square of cloth. Um, I used to actually use a microfiber cloth, a, a dusting cloth that I bought from the supermarket, which was really easy. You just put it on your hand, oiled it up, and then ran the rope through, through the glove. Um, I now choose to use um, just my hand without anything. And it's, it's part of the process for me where I'm touching my rope, I'm putting my energy into the rope, I'm oiling the rope, and it's all passing through my hands. And I kind of like that sort of abstract aspect of it, that I'm using my bare hands to condition something which is going to be used on somebody else's skin for hopefully a positive experience. So I kind of like that. So I, I do that now. So essentially, a couple of sprays from the oil bottle onto your hand and then literally just run your hand over the rope. It's important that you don't use too much oil. The rope will soak up oil a lot more as it's newer. So you can afford to be a little bit more heavy handed if you pardon the pun. Um, but as you continue to look after and treat your rope and add more oil, be careful that you don't make it too oily. You don't want a wet rope. Um, a rope that's too oily is actually um, worse for things than a rope that's too dry in that every time it touches the ground it's going to pick up dirt and you don't want um, it acting like a tiny little sandpaper cord against someone's skin because of the amount of dirt and stuff that's um, been sucked up by the oil or the wax. So apply sparingly. If you need to, you can go over it again. That's a matter for yourself. But it's better to have it too dry and then be able to put more oil on because if you put too much on, you can't get it out. So I do the entire length in that way. And then I like to go to the center of the rope. So just grab your knots move to the center of the rope which you would all know is where you start tying so this part of the rope gets a lot of use um, also if you're doing partial suspensions or suspensions this is where the line will be passing through as well whether you do a single bite or a double bite uh, for your uh, main line so I like to make sure that about this much of the rope is uh, really well oiled So I'll go, after I've done the entire length, I'll go back to the center and I'll give it a little bit of extra treatment. And I'll probably go maybe 40 centimeters to either side of the bite, either side of the center. And this is the part of the rope that you really want to be um, quite supple and well oiled. That's where the rope's going to be passing over itself uh, most often. So you want to make sure that that's going to be well protected. Well, 
While you can never be certain with the uh, manufacturing methods of natural rope, I think that a lot of rope breakages are more attributable to a rope being too dry than a rope that's uh, been well looked after and oiled. So that's an important safety consideration as well for why you should condition and care for your ropes. But that's about it for, um, for oiling. So once you've done this, the rope's ready to go. You need to start tying with it. The rope will become more supple as you tie with it. And the furry bits will start to come back. You can see that some of them have already started to come back here just from running my hands over at that time, which is fine. You can just go through and singe it once again. <coughs> So after you've singed and oiled the rope the first time, I would probably tie with it. If you're tying once or twice a week, I'd tie for it for probably six weeks to two months and then go back again and give it another singeing and another oiling. And then after that, depending on how much you tie with it, I'd probably oil it um, every couple of months, uh, maybe every six months. Just if it starts to feel dry, oil it up again. And remember that you can always come to Shibari Stuff, hit us with a DM. We've got rope for sale, uh, natural and usually coloured. Um, we've just sold out of red, purple and pink. And I'm expecting some in again soon. But we've got heaps of natural uh, nearly all the time. We've got some really wonderful oils and um, also accessories, shears, swivels, um, suspension rings. So, yeah. Hopefully we'll see you out there. Take care.